Russian army rising. The church is the breeding grounds for raising godly men and women who are willing to apply kingdom principles and values to bring transformation to their respective societies. We need to have a national focus. We don't have to lose this ambition or else we work against the Great Commission. They are equipped in righteousness. Unless our righteousness exceeds those who just know ABC and surprise others to do, but they don't do. Unless we see that. We pray for God to raise right ministers in our nations. We pray for God to raise right tax collectors. We pray for God to raise right security agents. They are bold and fearless. Standing your ground when the battle has been heated to such an extent that everyone is running away. But we don't quit. For we know no defeat. The agenda to possess the nations. Welcome to an equipping center of the word and prayer on Pentecost hour. Stay tuned in. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We want to bless God together for such a period as this. We are looking at the series on the topic family life. An endangered institution. The family life. An endangered institution. Now let me remind you of the encounter Mrs. Ruth Peel had with this university student. Let me remind you of what she said. In my opinion, marriage is almost finished. Most of us here feel the same way. We don't think it is necessary or even desirable to link yourself sexually to one partner in your early twenties. And limit yourself to that one person for the rest of your life. We think it is ridiculous. I'm sleeping with a fellow I like. I don't want to marry him. And I don't think he desires to marry me either. This is not my first love affair. And probably won't be the last. I can't see anything wrong with this. Someday, when and if I choose to have a child, I may be forced by society to marry. But until then, I shall not be part of it. And even if I choose to marry, and the relationship goes sour, I shall not be trapped in it. Mrs. Peel, we are highly blind. We see what Marik has done to our parents and to others, and we don't like what we see. Why can't a man Woman's relationship be just as meaningful outside of marriage as it is in it. Now, see, the power of Pentecost is to bring strongholds that exhaust itself against the knowledge of God to bring such strongholds down like this lady's stronghold. 
and they say a bebre a hinie any two mia hodo and man hoso etia on yanko pon to me nina ase. It is the power to live the life worthy of our calling. Isenia e wo abaye ya dwene mu no sa pentecoste tumi no nia e bo ayan ni se ye betumi atena se sene ya wa frere no see all these ideas may prevail but the pentecostal power is the power to take nations for Christ okay. take every mind captive to the obedience of Christ sa dwen kira enye papa titi se de wo abaye ya dwene mu ni ade nyina no e betumi anante nante wo de na nso pentecoste tumi no e ye ne fa wenum nyina no mum e bre wan se se christo suti e so mere ase we encourage ourselves not to worry about the enormity of the tax, but let us concentrate on the power within. Mm. For it is greater than the power without. And yes, I am crying, sir. Young share a Jumano Cassia at the Nemum, you be one to me our dear Ura Mono, not young who said, Was this young Kunimbe? Oh, yet at the other. Let us go for our spheres and God. Will bring the increase. We have seen that if you really want to possess the nations, then let us target the homes. Because the family is the base of society. And when we are talking about home, we are talking about a dwelling place. It could be a house, apartment, or a shelter. That is the usual residence of a person. A family or a household. So we all have a dwelling place. It could be a shelter. But it's a home. We have to target that place. And then we have to be mindful of what goes on in marriage and in family life. Because if the family is the base of the society, the marriage is the anchor of the society. That is why we suggested that we should pay attention to the home. This lady who was questioning Mrs. Ruth Peel, she comes from a home. Mm. See, today's generation lacks the commitment to marry. I want to assure you, woman, you know, we need to watch and as a home for my wife, and is afraid of the permanence. The concept of marriage proposes. Mm. And they are quick to jump out of marriage at the slightest challenge. So today we want to answer the question, why is it so? The answer is contained in the views of the university student we spoke about. Sir? Hmm. In her encounter with Mrs. Pew, the young student presented two assertions reflecting her views on marriage. And we want to examine it. I don't want us to go blaming her, but let us examine what she said. Maybe we may understand her. So I would like us to examine her assertions too. Serious assertions. The first she assess is Quote and unquote. Someday, when and if I choose to have a child, I may be forced by society to marry, but until then, I shall not be part of it. Now let's pay attention to what she said again. Someday, when and if I choose to have a child, I may be forced, and then she said, by the society to marry. 
But until then, I shall not be part of it. What is she saying? She seems to be saying that some circumstances could cause society to impose marriage on her. Or society could force her to marry. Society could force her to marry. But you see, brothers and sisters, marriage is not the product of society. So society can't force you to marry. And you want to mean so so worry. Because marriage is not derived from society. Marriage is not the product of society. See, marriage is God's own idea. Adam never requested for it. Adam, no, no, no. Marriage is God's own idea. Shall we read Genesis 2 from verse 18? Genesis 2 from 18. The Lord said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds of the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the best in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. Remember that Adam did not request for a woman. So the Lord caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man. And he brought her to the man. The man said, now the man is going to talk. The man said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman for she was taken out of Man. Now, this is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife and they become one flesh. Now, look at the introduction of the word wife. So, when God created the woman, he created her as Adam's Wife. Now, Adam and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. So I have just said that. Marriage is not the product of society. So she can't say that when I'm forced by society. No. Marriage is not the product of society. Marriage is God's own idea. See, the big thing about marriage is this. Yeah. Marriage is a creation ordinance. A 
a gift of God to mankind instituted in the Garden of Eden. Pe awariye e yo nyanko pon abodye anas abodye nsi seye e yo nyanko pon achedi ya odi ame nipa o nyame nsi seye e wo edin trum. It is a creation ordinance. E yo nyame nsi seye anas abodye nsi seye. Proverbs 18.22 I like this very scripture. Let's read together if we can. Proverbs 18.22 He who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. Ye kin kan mebusam etidu nwatwen yuma dio no mienu na akyerosem ne se de wanya yire no wanya adepa ne wanya ewrade ho eniso. So maybe for the sake of our sisters maybe instead of saying wife let's replace it with spouse so that we have a balance <laughs> sentence. He who finds a spouse yeah. Finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. While sometimes maybe the angels can close their eyes for a single to sleep with that food, they may not do the same for the married because they find favor with the Lord. He who finds a spouse finds what is good, not bad. So because marriage is God's own idea, God will never give us anything evil. It is part of his creation ordinance. And when he said everything that he has made was good and is good, Marriage was included. See, when your marriage is going through some challenges, you may not understand, but marriage is good. See, one day I was listening to this brother who was preaching at a wedding. And then he is young man, the time we were all pastors, he was talking about a lot of experiences, and then he was trying to let the congregation understand that every marriage has a problem. And I was trying to give an excuse for people to dwell in rotten marriages. But whilst he kept giving examples of his marriage, his uncles, and his... <laughs> my spirit <laughs> was vexed. And I wanted him to have told us which verse in the scripture said Awaribia or Haum, and that one I would have been okay. But don't bring experiences from your marriage and your uncles and then tell us that every marriage has challenges. And see, because of this, we are always accommodating rotten marriages. The Bible says that marriage is good. So put that as a standard and work towards it. When you cast them on the mommy, so when we finish the wedding, I accosted him. I said, my brother, you did well. But which verse in the Bible Talks about the fact that every marriage has a, a problem. Peter says that God is holy, therefore be holy. And today's generation will tell you that you can't attain that. So we start from uh, a point where we, we think that this one we can't. So we don't even make an attempt. See, you need to build a glorious marriage out of the rotten one, out of the existing one. Because Bible said marriage is good. Put that as your focus and work towards it. Thank you, Petro. Petro, 
Asemo tre ene chile se, o nyami ye kron kron, inti e se se, ye ye kron kron. O nyami ya bwa waree se, e adepa no. E se si e sha si e, e shwefi se, adini ya adepa, ni ebe nanti mu se di o nyami a chile no. So, let's go back to this ladies assertion. Ti mumi ye nko, sa abaye yi, na dwe pro no. Before we condemn her. An sana, ye bebu nu fodo. And the era of people who believe like she does. We need to find out what made her volunteer her opinion in the manner she did. Or what makes some people hold such a view of marriage? It seems to me that the answer is in a second assertion. So last week, this lady was a bad girl. But this week, she is becoming my friend. <laughs> but let's take the second assertion. So quote and unquote. If ever I choose to marry and the relationship goes bad, I shall not be trapped in it. We are hardly blind. We see what marriage has done to our parents and to others. And we do not like what we see. See, Anna Okai. I say, say, yeah, me say, me worry po. Na ayonko fano etu esaniem anase saya. Me unko son tina sa ayonko fa apuni mu. Che, ye niye buye buye, ye hunu ye koso awariem ye hunu ni aye ye janom ni ye nanom ni wawa akano na ye ye hunu no yempe. We do not like yempe kra. This is striking. This is pure philosophical statement on the theory of determinism, which teaches that we are determined by conditioning and conditions. So she's saying that, see what marriage has done. So a certain kind of marriage condition has shaped the parents, and she actually do not want to be put in that same condition. Pe we sen ya okasa ya no eh bibi a chire nya nsensu a eh eh gina sen ya yesi adie bi hu agina ye eso. Na ne kasa mu no na opese o chire se adie bi a wo ya dwene mu ene no ma etwa ye hu a chire no etumi chire ye bobre. Let me try and explain this theory of determinism. Ma men chire sa nya nsensu a enyina so sema a chire sen ya yesi si agina ye efa bi. It means one we are determined by conditioning and conditions. Two. This theory lends itself to a lot of excuses to human behavior. It suggests that someone or something in your environment is responsible for your situation and condition. So it is your grandmother's DNA. It is your parents' genes. It is your upbringing. So this theory of determinism always leaves us not being too responsible for what happens to us. It is some condition that has made us who we are. You see, her point is this. That a married condition has destroyed her parents and others. And she does not like what she sees. Now, 
I'm not saying that when you go to school and they are teaching you about genes and all that, don't pay attention. You write and pass for your lecture. But you see, when... <laughs> be, be, but you, you cannot hold your grandmother responsible for what you did. You can't say because her DNA is in me, that is why I'm a talkative like my grandmother. No. And we do not like what we see. Now, what she was actually saying, but did not give it a voice, is this. If I saw any good marriage, I would change my stance. Listen to her again. If ever I choose to marry and the relationship goes bad, I shall not be trapped in it. We are hardly blind. We see what marriage has done to our parents and to others, and we don't like what we see. She said, What did she say? It's premise on what she sees. And in that junior wow, are you no no? A junior dear, oh no so. Brothers and sisters, I don't know. My focus in this series on marriage and family life is not to teach on marriage, but to bring to fore some ideas people hold on the family and marriage, and to encourage us to stand up to it as people of God. I'm not going to teach on marriage and family life. And what we can do to effectively counter that is to produce good examples of marriage and family life. And this lady will change her mind. When we raise a Christian home, this lady will change her mind. See, there is this story about a Hungarian refugee called Andreas Thomas who spent 55 years of his life in a Soviet prison. From 1945 to 2000. Thomas was just 20 years when he was incarcerated. See, in the year 2000, when things were losing up in the former Soviet Union and they were going to release the political prisoners, Thomas did not look quite right. They thought he was insane. His mind was all clouded. So they brought in a Hungarian psychiatrist. To examine him. See, then after the examination, the psychiatrist explained, this man is not insane. You have messed him up in a solitary confinement. Release him for us and we will make him well. So, so the prison officials released 
him. And if you said that for Asha for no, a jai, papa, Edema. Now, Thomas was too weak to walk, so um, they put him in a wheelchair and to be taken out. As I bring on that Tom, I know I am mere on to me, your shanty, what Nitra Tiasianama, a young Mubua for Tremunum, and I would you know Edinokoi. As he was being wheeled out, he made a request. What did no corner? Ostra said, When you bribe a man. Can I have a mirror? You be saying, "Say, we be to me the ashishe abrenoa." He hasn't seen his face for five decades and a half. We in frisia do num num no on who ne num e wa ashishe muda. As Thomas saw himself in the mirror, he could not bear the image he saw of himself. Bra o she ne num wa ashishe muno na di on who no no on to me. He covered his face with his hands and started sobbing like a baby. The young, handsome, and energetic man has changed beyond recognition. If you could not make himself out, who else could? No one can call you Babuna, who didn't want him one who's in Hosono, and no shin anymore. She showed me a fed you at your own on Pecra. The last time he saw his face, he was 20, robust, very strong, politically driven, with some hope for his country, hungry to be free from the Soviet pressure. Bra, it chat to a hoon and him no dim free shabby aduna. Now am I your same or dim a quatrain pass or be bombarding a buan in mine and any man for a one hungry. Now so, your baby will be pee. Now worn out, beaten down. I feel what prat and take him to be insane. I feel near one who no crown is a jama, now you know my canoe. Seventy five years. Yeah, with di in free shia at your son in no. See, my point of bringing this story of Thomas Andreas is this. If God were to present us a mirror to reflect our true image or character, how would we look like? If your private prayer life or your devotional life was watched by someone aside from God, what would they conclude about the nature and the character of God you profess? If your marriage and your family life was watched by someone aside from God, what would that person conclude about the nature and the character of God? Not the big one. If God were to grant an opportunity to this university lady to watch your marital life and your family life as God sees it. What will she say about the institution of marriage and the character and nature of God who instituted it? Now, if this lady in question were to watch our marital life, would she conclude that marriage is a gift from God? Would she still hold on to the view that marriage is a trap? So now the big one. Will she like what she will see? Now listen to me, brothers and sisters. Our worth to God in public is directly measured by who we are 
in private. Ten ye is sumbo emma e wade e wo ni padum ana pefe mono e jinaho emma kwaya ye nu nyanko ponti kukwemunu. I don't think that this lady is disappointing, but I think that those of us Christians are disappointing people like her. Minyi ni se abaye bribiyama nebemo bu ne mum ya ye ye jidifon ye en yebu nabem. So my approach in this series is not to teach about marriage and family life, but to draw attention to the fact that Christ-likeness in our marriage and family lives can impact society. And make the possessing the nation's agenda easier. It is my prayer that the far reaching river of God in us will flow out in blessing even to the ends of the earth. Beginning from our homes. Beginning from our homes. I hope you heard me. I hope you heard God speak through my voice. I hope you saw my face. And I hope you saw Jesus' face. In my face. I pray you heard his voice. The challenges out there is not unsurmountable. But Christians are not being true witnesses of the Master. When the light shines, the darkness will not be able to withstand it. We'll continue next week. And I'm praying that God will grant us the grace. So we'll be gathered together again at his feet. Marriage is good. From good Christian home guarantees generational blessings. It is a great witness to the society. Let us rise and take our spheres beginning from home. God bless you. Shall we rise to our feet? Subscribe to our social media handles for life transforming messages.